I'm here, Mr. Fisher. You ready? Yep, you can cut you All right, we'll start out with this. Uh, I'll, I'll explain as, as I go along here. Okay, you go. Okay, cut you Can everyone see that? Yep. Okay, this is uh, my, my makeup for my capacitors and the housing for the wires. The wires are eight gauge stranded uh, house wire. It's not automotive wire, it's a little thicker gauge wire. To the right, you will see a parchment paper that is a, uh, a copper oxide composite gants with the uh, nano material of the copper itself within the electrolytic gel. Um, and this is explained by Mr. Kesh early on. If we take copper and burn it, and get it hot, put it in distilled water, flakes will immediately, nanoparticles will fall. We can collect these while I collected them. I'll show you a specimen here in just a second of where I mix them. And next beside it is also an aluminum sheet with my first trial with using the same materials on top of the aluminum. And this is a foil that is the thickness of a uh, pie pan. Uh, little, uh, it's it's thinner than a than a, than a soda pop can, uh, but thi but thicker than aluminum foil. It's uh, in between. Uh, this. Uh, First uh, uh, set did not work, and I had to use the composite gants, which I'll show you here in just a second. This here is the uh, what I was telling you about. This is an electrolytic gel that I used. This is the uh, nanoparticles that I have saved uh, over the times of doing this uh, in distilled water, and along with a copper oxide and, and mixed. You seen uh, earlier on the paper in the aluminum what it looks like mixed. Here it is. After it's mixed, uh, and, uh, it's just a, use a little egg beater. You'll see here. This is the composite. Now this is the one I figured found out that worked. Uh, the, the green doesn't work on the copper. Works the, the copper works uh, oxide works great on the parchment paper, but not so much on the aluminum. Uh, but when I when I use this composite gans here on the aluminum and left the copper oxide on the paper. Uh, my capacitor started working properly, and everyone's seen that I've been able to pull six kilowatts. Now, I burned them up, but I did get six kilowatts through those capacitors before I did burn them. And I would like to say all four of them did not burn. Uh, uh, three were badly damaged, four, the fourth one survived. So, uh, with that being said, I'll go back to another picture here. This is a, a preliminary setup of uh, me winding after I had the nano strands getting my connections. Uh, so uh, this was, uh, I believe Armin's uh, brought this forward to us, this connection here of being able to connect uh, the nano materials uh, in such a way. So I used his design and incorporated it uh, and into this here, uh, which I showed you earlier. This was, uh, this is not the finished product by all means. I have uh, 18 turns on my uh, capacitor, but this was the first one I built and I wanted to test and I was in a hurry. I was excited like a little kid. I always am when I'm doing this and I wanted to see if I had a working capacitor and this is when I found out that it, it was functional. Uh, and uh, I would like to now show you a picture of a burnt one and I have had a jeweler tell me that there is a great possibility that that is gold and uh, I could need to put some acid on it to see. Uh, this is what happened when I burnt the capacitors up uh, through a composite of what we think. And I've discussed this with Mr. Cash using the composite gants, the aluminum, and high voltage. Uh, it was a result which brought the gold out on top of the uh, copper. Now, I scraped that for you guys tonight with a wire brush. So you can really, I took off all the nano that was around it. But prior to that, gold sticking out it was completely black like the rest of the wire uh, but now you can see the red of the copper surrounding what appears to be gold now like i said three different people one was a jeweler has all said that that really does appear to be gold so i am gonna go and have it tested when i go to town uh, which uh, was uh, just a, a fluke thing that happened from burning up one of the capacitors um, this was my best design right here with the uh, disregard the mesh, but this can uh, you can you show the uh, in the what they call it center core with just the copper? Have you got that one with you? Uh, 
yeah, this is these are center cores right here. No, no, without nano coating, the matter state. One an eight gauge stranded without yeah. uh, any without it. Uh, I can you show don't. one live. Oh, no, Mr. Kesh. Yes, I do have one. I uh, can show you real quick live. I can't show you a picture. Yeah. Okay, let's live. If you'll give me about two seconds, I'll have one out here for you. Because I just happen to have 70 feet of it right here beside me. You got to change the camera. Yes, sir. Give me two seconds. Well, that's just a, I shouldn't really say that. It's just something we get in the habit of saying over here. Nothing ever actually takes two seconds. It always takes longer than that. Uh, you see, the what what is important for this teaching like now showing these things is not to teach you to make uh, this kind of or repeat is to inspire to come up with different version of application and the implication of it and thank you okay. and this is what it is that's what it's about would you like to on your camera yeah yes i'm gonna stop share there and go to my video here and that's what a piece of uh the matter eight gauge wire stranded looks like right there. Okay. And how do you wind it? It's pre wound. And I buy it, I, I got a. No, no, I mean, how do you make it into a capacitor? Have you got oh, a capacitor? Oh, now, 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 everybody else does this a different way. Now, this was something that me and Bernie uh, tried a long time ago. And this, this actual method of making. These capacitors, then uh, this is the one that has the gold on it. You can see it clearly. That's, I mean, uh, but uh, this was put in a solution uh, of caustic, uh, j just the bottom part. The, the the caps were already cut and they were above the, the caustic solution. This is a cold caustic solution, also no heat involved, uh, and it and it took several. My wires, Bernie's went really fast because he used a thinner gauge automotive wire, and I wanted to test with a thicker gauge household wire. Now we both used a big wire, but his was thinner stranded. His achieved the process of nano coating to the end a lot faster than mine did. Mine took um, almost 90 days to get all the way to the top, uh, each piece nano coated. So uh, that's probably another unique characteristic of this particular capacitor and the way it's structured is the fact that it took so long to nano coat itself and it did it naturally uh, in its own natural environment with the caustic. I mean, you know, there was no steam, there was no anything. You know, this was just a clear cold caustic and the, and the bottom, that much of the wire was uh, in the caustic, you know, that, and the rest of it was above the, uh, and I left the uh, I left the jacket. The jacket was on them. I'd only I'd only uh, took that much off the off the jacket to be submerged in the wire. The jacket remained on the wire. I wanted to see that if the nano went through the jacket, you know, uh, even uh, with and without ox oxygen around it. So and it did. You know, they they thoroughly nano coated, but it might, like I said, mine took a lot longer of a process to, to do this, to, to get this to occur. Um, but that was yeah, it. Yeah, one of the, one of the things like what you show here, we done, we showed this in um, Coca-Cola about 12 years ago, where we just put two ends of the wire in the Coca-Cola and we draw like 30 centimeter, 50 centimeter copper. And when you strip it, the whole gets nano coated. This kind of uh, nano coating, when it's what we call a plasmatic nano coating, or when you put your uh, copper wire in the center and then you wrap it with uh, aluminium foil with the cans and uh, you use it as a capacitor, you find out the center pin changes and the nano coats itself. And this plasmatic nano coating behaves totally different than the caustic nano coating. If you have, let's say, efficiency of one to a hundred, when you do plasmatic coating, is one to a million. <laughs> Powerful because this is created according to the field, not by the condition of the uh, matter state around it. If you start learning how to plasma nano coat, you find out your system is totally behaves and conducts different. 
plasma coating is essential part of the space technology where when you use a caustic coating or you use a heat coating you do not create the right balance when you do the plasmatic coating you see you reach the point of a sponge it's very transparent it's like a dust you can collect it and uh, the conductivity is literally superconductor in a position that can even allow the field plasma to lock into. So, um, plasmatic coating is something which you can do. One of the ways you can do, which I've done before, can I share the screen, please? Thank you very much, Douglas. Thank you, Mr. Keshe. Have a blessed Thank you. Have you managed to finish your system yet? You know I'm working on it, sir. I got it out. I'm, I'm moving out be from it. Running out of room in here, as you can see, I've, I've got stuff stacked up to my elbows. So, uh, I'm, but I'm, would you be able yeah, to finish it? I put my other system outside, so I've got more elbow room to work. I take the laptop out there during the next show and uh, can show. You, can you finish it today? Oh yeah, it's uh, pretty much finished already. Yeah, okay. Just okay. If you achieve, let me know, and then we go. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, indeed. I'll talk to you later, Mr. Cash. Thank you very much, indeed. What is important, some of you will see, you understand, go back to the same principle. Where we show the two cores, and you can put materials, copper or aluminium, across the two cores. And you find out which one of your copper or aluminium or other material, they start getting nano-coated. So, in fact, you don't need to put them in a caustic. Now, because you have a field flow in across the the two system or your dynamic system, you start nano coating plasmatically without a matter of state. And this kind of coating is what you're looking for in superconductivity of different structure that you are used to up to now. You got to realize nano coating with the plasmatic does not give you the transparent, uh, what you call black black, it gives you a powder black. And this is the kind of superconductors. What happens, in fact, on the surface, when you when you do a caustic coating, the spacing is like this. When you do the heating coating, the space is very much like this. When you do the plasma coating, the spacing is like this. Now, you really work. In, in the nano coating with the caustic, you still have certain losses in the long term. But if you go into the plasma coating, then it's totally free. And it behaves different, the system behaves different. This is what you go into next, I've spoken about this very earlier on, plasma coating of the wires will give you a totally different structure. If you try to nano coat, uh, let's, let me explain it to you this way. You get a copper and you nano coat it. Uh, you have your nano coating, which is on it. You, it's very hard to create a nano tube out of this because what you got to do, you have to empty this copper out of this zone, and you find out in most of the time. I've tried this, is that one of these atoms is connected inevitably with the molecule of the copper, and it's like when you have a, a what do you call it? A, a ball of wool, and you pull in the center, the whole thing collapses. You detach, you lose your nanomaterial. But when you do a plasmatic coating, it's totally different. Plasmatic coating is dictated by the structure without the attachment to the matter. So, if you heat up or can create a high matter uh, current through it, you can drain the copper matter state. You are left with the true plasmatic nanotubes, superconductor, and these are the ones which, in the future, I'll explain to you what you can use it for. These are what you, you, you have to develop the technology into, and now that we speak and you understand how you create energy, you have to understand in your systems, how you create fields that allows, for example, for elements of the copper to separate themselves and they become the plasma of themselves and then they stick and they hold on, and this will give you totally different properties. The plasma nano coating happens in most of your capacitors. 
if you don't do nano coating of the center copper and then just put it inside and put the current through it, you'll find out your nano coating under the aluminium is in a state of uh, plasma, not in a caustic level. 